Digest. True stories from real life collected from the pages of the most famous, widely read magazine in the world. Ordeal at Yuba Gap. The crisis that overtook the city of San Francisco streamliner to become the greatest drama of the snow since the fame tragedy at Donner Pass. Six hours of surgery. The taut, exciting drama that envelops the lives of five people of medicine working in the hushed concentration of the operating room to save a boy's life. The man who beat death. The warm, moving, personal story of tennis champion Billy Talbert and his valiant uphill battle to victory over diabetes. The secret weapon of Joe Smith. The classic story of the United Nations and how one reporter proved to the Soviets that the pen is mightier than the sword. My first bullfight. The amusing and highly exciting story behind America's Toreador, Sidney Franklin's claim to fame and fortune as Brooklyn's first matador. Your favorite stories brought to life on TV Reader's Digest. The bride, a headstrong young lady from Boston. The groom, an unpredictable young man from Texas. Honeymoon ahead, full of hope, ambition, and with enough canvases and oils to paint all of Mexico. For where else could two enthusiastic art students find such inspiration, such color? Not to mention a wonderfully drafty house with no conveniences. Sally, I've been thinking. Have I the right to sit here for a whole year and take money from my father? But Jack, that was his wedding present, and I think it was a wonderful thing. As he said, if you'd just gone into partnership with him on the ranch without getting the itch to paint out of your system, you might regret it for the rest of your life. <laughs> what a guy he is. Most artists have to fight and struggle, break family ties, live in a garret and starve. My father puts a brush in my hand and says, paint. You know what I think? I think I married into a very smart family. Well, naturally. Okay, Toledo, you can relax now. Toledo, what's the matter with your foot? I have cut it on a rock while tending the sheep in the hills. It does not heal and it pains me much. Here, let's have a closer look at that. Well, the first thing you need is a clean bandage. Hey, this doesn't look so good. There's infection here. You better get home and tell your mother to get you to a doctor. I have no mother, senor. Well, then your father or somebody or whoever takes care of you. Nobody takes care of me. I am the orphan. I work for the Patrona. Work? I tend the sheep. I do other jobs. The Patrona feeds me frijoles and tortillas and lets me sleep on the floor close to the stove. It is a very nice floor. Well, let's get you inside. You bathe his foot in hot water. I'll drive into town and get the doctor. He must remain in bed until the foot is cleared. Oh, but I cannot. My Patrona, she will be angry. You are not getting out of that bed, Toledo, until that foot is well. Toledo! The dinero. Where is the dinero? You're lazy. You think we do not need the dinero? You think you could run away from me, huh? The Patrona? Get up from that bed, you lazy good for nothing. Now look, senora, the boy is... Uh... So, you are the man who paints. Where is my dinero? The money? I let Toledo stand for you to paint, and you steal him from me. You do not send me the money for the posing. You mean you take the money we give him for posing? See? He belongs to me, no? Belongs to you? Why, that's the most horrible... That's slavery. It is the custom of the country for homeless children to be bound out to employers. Uh-huh. Well, now, I don't care about the custom of the country, but the boy is not getting out of that bed until the foot is better. I want my money, and I want it now. Well, you're not going to get the money, and you're not going to get the boy until the foot is better. I am getting the money, or I will get the police. Go ahead and get the police. Senora, un momento, un momento. 
Mire, señora, ellos son turistas. No entienden nuestras costumbres. Yo quiero mis pesos ahora. Yo quiero mis pesos. ¿Qué dicen? No entienden nuestras costumbres. I don't know, but the word peso keeps coming up with monotonous regularity. Do you have ten dollars in your pocket, señor? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Aquí tiene, señor. Oh. Gracias, señores. Gracias, señoras. Gracias, doctores. Uh, what happened? You have just bought Toledo for ten dollars American. Bought it! What do you think? I think that's a mighty attractive thumb. <laughs> Senor, senora, uh, senor, I bring you little orphan boy for to adopt. We are very poor in my village and cannot feed him. Oh, now, now look, I, I'm afraid you have the wrong notion. We, we couldn't possibly afford to support two of them. If you can afford one, senor, you can afford two. But we've already adopted one little boy. Uh, you will teach him to read and write as it is say you are teaching little Toledo. There is no school in our village. That's more responsibility than we can take on. Would you have him grow up to be an ignorant peon like the rest of us? Of course not. Gracias, senor. Gracias. Uh, then it is settled. Israel. He's called Israel. But Sally, our allowance, we, we've stretched it so far already. Didn't you hear what the man said? If we can afford one child, we can afford two. For Dios, you are good. The Holy Family will repay you. Toledo, meet your new brother. The word is freedom, spelled F-R-E-E-D-O-M. Now, that means to be free. Not free to do what you want at anyone's expense. Not free to steal or to lie or to hurt. But free to respect the rights of your neighbor. Israel. To protect and defend him as he in turn must protect and defend you. Now neighbor, spelled N-E-I-G-H-B-O-R, means everybody else in the world. They understand. Excuse, please. My name is Huizo. I have heard you are two kind Americanos who will give a home to those who need a home. I am one of those. Well, uh, Huizo, we'd sure love to help you out, but I'm afraid we're filled at capacity. It is all right. I did not think it was true, the story I heard. Why should anyone take me? Well, you don't have to go right away. You could stay and have a bite to eat and rest a while. Gracias, senora. But I must go now. I have many, many miles to return to my village before morning. It is a great distance. Wait. He is our neighbor, is he not? Yes. Neighbors is everybody else in the whole world. You have told us. Is it not so? Well, yes, that's right, but, uh... He is not everybody else in the whole world? Well, he's, uh... He's certainly one of them. Then we must protect and defend him. You have told us this. He can't sleep with us, and we will share the food with him. This is being a neighbor, no? Well, you have certainly made a point, and I stand corrected, but... I could never cut it down to Israel's size anyway. I can stay! How's the foot? Foot is okay. It's George. Come on, Lisa. Sometimes I wonder whether we're educating them or not. Jack? Hmm? I have something to tell you. Well, what is it? What'd you do? Shoot our whole allowance and a new sombrero? No, I didn't buy a hat, darling, but... 
I did bring you something from town. Oh, the camel's hair brushes. Good. No, that isn't what it is. You see, dear, there was this little boy and... Oh, no. No, Sally, you didn't. Well, he had no friends and he was so small and lonely and, and his parents had run off somewhere and Dr. Perez thought... Sally, fun is fun, but you've got to realize... Tonya, Papa. His name is Shamula. The heart of Mexico is a, is a vast plateau or, or tableland like this, in between two ranges of mountains. Now, many millions of years ago, the ocean was spread all over it. Then came violent volcanic eruptions like this. Boom, boom, boom. The ocean drained off, and here, in this new land, there came to be a great and proud people that were your ancestors. Did you enjoy your visit, Israel? Some cold beans in the kitchen if you're hungry, Dad. Uh, he's just in time for his history lesson. He can eat later. I have done a very bad thing. I know I think I should not do it, perhaps. What'd you do? I have brought my cousin. Well, how nice. Will he visit with us long? He will always visit with us, Senora Mama. I have promised him. What's his name? Antonio. The beans are in the kitchen, Antonio. One, two, three, four, five, and, uh... Six. I am Felix. I have my own bed. Well, uh, that was very thoughtful of you, Felix. I have also the plate, and the cup, and the spoon. I am 100% ready to be adopted. Come on, fellas. Sally, just look what those kids grew. Have you ever seen such tomatoes in your life? Oh, they're magnificent, simply magnificent. And gosh, but this bit of cactus... No, no, not they... cactus, some bougainvillea. Not for to paint, for to eat. First for to paint, then for to eat. You know, sometimes it's English, it is not so good. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for heaven's sakes, who did this? Well? I did. I'm sorry. I will wipe it off. You'll do nothing of the sort. Isn't that good? Say, that's all right. Where did you learn to paint like that? I worked for a man who makes big jars. He teach me to paint flowers. You like it? You are not angry? Paint. Senor, you are the Americano who takes all the children? That's right. These are the ones? Well, these are some of them. Why? You kidnap these, maybe, no? Kidnap? It is told everywhere that you are the kidnappers. All over, boys disappear when they come to this house. It is even said that you eat them. Really? For this you are under arrest. But this is ridiculous. We haven't eaten any little boys. <laughs> Not for eating, for kidnapping. You are under arrest for kidnapping. <laughs> well, you can't arrest us. We... Kidnapping is a serious charge. Eh? Well, it's also ridiculous. Now, every one of these boys was either abandoned or, or his people know we have him. Don't look at me, senor. I am only a policeman. You come, no? Well, we'll see the American consul about this. Oh, si, si, senor. But you first come. And you take these boys into your home willingly? Of course. Why? Why? Because they need us. 
And you feed them? Well, you don't think we'd let them starve, do you? <laughs> Americanos. What are you going to do with this? You had us arrested and dragged in here. Well, we were most polite. All right, so you were polite. Now let's be real polite and let us go. Gee. What? You mean you let us go? Gee. Come on, boys. Un momento. I said you could go, senor. But on one condition. We have a boy here in jail. We arrested him this morning for a stealing. He's too young to be in jail and too old to be allowed to steal. If you will take him home with the others, I will let you go without investigating any further. I knew there was a catch to it. Huh. One more cannot make any difference. That's what we keep saying. Okay. This is Pedro. Looks like we've got ourselves a problem, child. All right, fellas. This is going to be an anthropological expedition. And we're going to go up in the hills and visit the Indian ruins. Who knows? Maybe one of you will grow up to uncover the hidden secrets of the Aztecs, huh? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. Tell me, dear, were there any future anthropologists in the game? There certainly was. Who? Me. You? Sally, do you realize that the ancient cities of Monte Alban and Mitla existed long before the Spaniards ever came to America? I'm going to get some books and study up on it. When will you find the time? What with caring for an army of small boys, you've hardly had a moment for your painting. Yeah, I know, but... You know, painting seems to pale compared to those boys. Well, I hope anthropology pays well. You know, they're also hungry and growing. Say, how many hold them out? Just about. I ordered a dozen sacks of beans today. Thank heavens beans are so filling. And I think Pedro needs a new suit. I'm sure it would help his morale a lot. He's just at that age, you know. He's a troublesome boy, that Pedro. I can't seem to get to him. I know. He doesn't trust us. Well, I just have to keep trying. and running away. Why did you want to leave, Pedro? Aren't you happy here? If you wanted to go away, you could have gone. You're not a prisoner here. You're free to go anytime. Now, if you want. You mean you're not going to arrest me? What for? For stealing the candlesticks. You didn't steal them, did you? They're still here. Wait. Take them. They're yours. Mine? You wanted them. You may have them. Take them. That's right, Pedro. They're yours.
Take your brother to bed. I think he's going to stay with us. We can certainly use you here at the ranch, and just to make it more interesting, I'm acquiring another 3,000 acres on the northeast end of our property. The old Miller Ranch, which I am buying in your name, Jack, as the beginning of our partnership together. Does it sound good to you, and will it be as interesting as painting? I hope so. Well, there you are. What about it? What are we going to do, Sally? My mind isn't any more made up now than it was six months ago. Do you still want to be a painter? I don't think so. I mean, I, I haven't got what it takes to be a real painter. What Felix has, for instance. You can see it in his every brush stroke. He's going to be a real painter, that boy. You wait and see. That's just what I'd like to do. Wait and see. You mean you'd like to stay here? For good? Would you mind? No, I don't think so. I don't think I'd mind at all. I mean, I've got a, got a real feeling for this place, for the kids. But how would we manage? We can't expect to go on taking money from Dad forever. Besides, it wouldn't be right. Well, I've got a little, and we wouldn't need much. Ah, uh, no go. Have to find some way to make an income, even a small income. Uh, I'm afraid it's back to the ranch for us. What's going to happen to our family? That's what's keeping me up nights. What are we going to do, Sally? We can't take them back with us. I don't think we could even get them into the country. We've got to make some kind of arrangements. We could get a family to take care of them, and we could send money back from the States for their room, board, and education. I don't want to even think about it. I'll miss them. Me too. This is no good, huh? This is not good, I think. And so far, Senor Papa and our Senora Mama do not remain here. I will soon be back in your jail. And you'll have to take care of me. That would be very bad for you, would it, Senor Chief of Police? Agree. It will be very bad. Also, I'll be an orphan again. I do not care if I'm an orphan. But I am sad if I do not see Senor Papa and Senora Mama again. It is well you have come to me. This is a serious problem. But I will think of a way to keep Senor Papa and Senora Mama from leaving us. Where are they? Should they not be here? Don't worry, they will arrive. Well, now, who do you suppose that is? I wonder what we've done now. Senora? Senor? Senora? Senor? This is the mayor of our village. Senora? Senor? <coughs> we, we have become senor because we heard how you teach all these children how to read and write and how to respect the country. And for this, we are respecting you. We wish you to teach all of the children as you have taught your own. And we will pay you 250 pesos. 300 pesos? All right, then. 300 pesos. You will accept, senor? Well, I, I don't know. It comes as such a surprise. 300 pesos, Jack. Well, let me think about it, and I'll, I'll come in tomorrow and talk it over with you. Gracias, senor. Senor? Gracias, señor. Señor. Señora. Gracias, señor. Señor. Señora. Thank you, señor chief of police. Well, what do you know? School teacher. Yes, I am a school teacher. If you'll be the school teacher, you'll get plenty of money and you will stay with us? Well, I don't know if it'll be plenty, but I think it'll be enough. And you will continue to be a senor papa and a senora mama? Always. Of course, Dad will be disappointed that I don't come back to help him with the ranch. Your dad will understand better than you think. Your dad wants you to be a useful man, and how can you be a useful man unless you do the things you want to? You want to do this, don't you? Yes. Yes, I do. 
seems like a good way to live. Teach the young, to raise a family, and love my wife. Of course, we, uh, we won't get rich on it. Oh, who wants to be rich? I have become very fond of beans. <laughs> <laughs> I am Jose, and I wish to be adopted. Please, senor. <laughs> Consider yourself hired. And my brother, Salvador, also? And my brother, Joaquin? Agreed. But that's all. Well, ten is a nice round number, don't you think? Nice and round. Then we'll leave it at ten. Eleven. No, Sally, ten. Count them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven. No, Sally. Sally, you mean... We've got so many now, one more won't make any difference. Think of it. Eleven children our first year. What a honeymoon. <laughs> <laughs>